Thank you, Brother. Good evening. Brother Lindsay was just telling me he had to slip out just a little bit early, so we were kind of talking it over together. That's what was the speaking of. I'm very happy to be here again tonight and want to thank all of you for your kindness and your fine things that you've done for us since we've been here. And today I had the privilege of sitting with your pastors and their wives. Such a lovely hour of fellowship we had. The presence of the Lord was there. I shall long remember it. Uh, the fine cooperation on all of the ministers together, how lovely they all were, and how nice they, they, they were to me, and how nice all of you have been to me. There's so many things that you've done. I just can't mention from the platform here, but I'm sure that every one of you knows what it is, and I'm very thankful from the depths of my heart uh, for what you've done. Even one brother, the kind of while ago, he had a rifle he wanted to show me. He ran out there and had it in the car and said, just take your hand and put it on this and see how it feels. <laughs> it was very nice. God bless him. And just some of the men, one brother came and take me up in the big tower up here today, too, up, in, up here where you live all over the city. And just little kind things. Last night when I went home, there was two cakes that had a great big cherry pie. And am I full of cherry pie? And it was so good. I sure appreciate it. And everybody's kind. I tell you about Cleveland people, I found this. They do more acting than they do talking, so that, that's bad. Action always speaks louder than words, doesn't it? <laughs> that's right. Uh, that's what a young man said to his, uh, to his girlfriend. He kept telling her how much he loved her, and he, and he wasn't just exactly true as he should be. He said, well, honey, if you just act instead of talk. <laughs> so that's, that's right, if you just act instead of talk. Well... I'm sure the Lord will be with us tonight and bless us and give us his, his blessings I trust. Now, I'm thinking he has turned it off of me. Or either I turned it off once. Somebody turned it off anyhow. And don't leave the gallery getting somewhere. <laughs> That's just like, like that light. It is the, the lamp that makes the light. It's the, the electricity that's in the wire that makes the light. It heats the wire, and the wire gets hot and makes the light. But it isn't the great wire that takes the, the current off of it. It's dead. And that's the way it is with us. And did you ever know uh, electricity? I've worked in it for years. But there's... There's no one in the world that knows what electricity is. Isn't that strange? No one knows what it is. They can harness it. They can make it right. They can cook with it. They can heat with it. They can light with it. But no one knows what it is. It's two pieces of material rolling together, makes a continuity, and sends out the electricity. And that's the way it is. When those two pieces get to rolling together, that's what breaks it off in the generator. And so that's the way when a... A Christian gets to working with God, rolling together, that brings an unseen force that does mysteries that none of us know nothing about, only we know it's God, isn't that right? Yeah. Take that away from us, and we're dead, aren't we? But we're thankful tonight that God has blessed us, given us of his grace, and now may he add his blessings to us as we worship together tonight. And I was... Uh, getting awfully tired. Last evening they got me, before I even know where I was at, I was outside, and I thought many of the ministers was praying for the sick, which I hear they claim a great result, and I'm so happy for that. And always remember, when you get sick, call your pastor, or go to your church, go somewhere and let someone pray with you. And a little prayer call, the commemoration of divine healing. Many of you believe in that, don't you? Stand in uh, anxious one to another. Now, I believe I've made announcements before, and I will again tonight. I send those out for the thousands of weeks all over the world. Great testimonies of all kinds come in from everywhere. Some of the most outstanding testimonies, especially among the cripples and so forth, where they have to wait. And people 
who have children, they get them and keep them in the Bible. And every once in a while, you just hear of all kinds of things that's done. And now, I send those to anybody, any place in the world, absolutely free. And if you wish one, just write me at Gibbersville, Indiana, and I'll be glad to send it right to you. And I have some instructions now. Uh, one of the secretary at Jeffersonville at the office sent me some last night of uh, the receipt of how to believe healing in the Bible. I believe my brother gave them out last night what I had here. There was a few left. He sent me about a dozen. I told him to give out to the sick people. And uh, how to believe God on Bible grounds. And everything must be based on the Bible. Now, if you wish one of these just to be in your home, just send that that you're welcome. And just to put it on the Acts, the 19th chapter, and leave it there. And when sickness or something uh, uh, in the home, why, I probably wasn't right for your picture. They told me you were going to take the picture of my brother, and he said it wasn't the reporter. So <laughs> I would be glad if you wish for another one. That's all right, brother. <laughs> so many times when Christians are anything that can be done for anything for the glory of God, all right. But I do not like to see the work of God criticized. And so I, I like for it, everything in God's kingdom to run just as smooth as everything has to run. Now, just to write me, William Branham, Jefferson Bill, and I'll be glad to send you. Uh, or what you need for some of your loved ones to spend it out. Now, when you find it, you'll have a little uh, piece of paper that's been picked up by uh, a little mimograph sheet on what to do. But now the ribbon, I say to myself, each one, thousands of them, thousands, each time I go home, I get to get great bolts, hundreds of yards of ribbon, take off to myself, and sit there and pray, pray, cut the ribbon, pray, pray. And I believe one thing that God will respect is sincere. If you be real, sincere. That's what the angel told me. The brain said, if you'll be sincere and will get the people to please you, nothing shall stand before the prayer. Something happened a while ago, and I give a consent to something that I have never in all the days of my ministry ever did this. Uh, they asked me last evening of some businessman of the city which is a brother in Christ. And for the benefit of the Cleveland people and all the people everywhere, for another day of service, a man has purchased an arena or a big auditorium somewhere here in the city for a service. And he, they asked me last night, Brother Bowman, one of the associating pastors, if they would, uh, or cooperating pastors, rather, if they would, if we had to serve. And I told him I should pray and speak the Lord. The managers, I asked them, and they were all right for whatever the Lord said. They knew I was pretty tired, and yet I had to go. But what could anyone say to a group of people like this as any good to me what you do in the coming and the hall? So, Sunday afternoon and Sunday night, They'll announce it probably tomorrow. There'll be services in some auditorium here in the city, our arena. And Sunday afternoon services will probably be a gospel service, preaching, and Sunday night praying for the sick. And I think we all ought to say for that brother who is sponsoring this, we ought to all say, thank God for our brother. Thank God for our brother. Long may he and his live to see the things. For well, anyone that's got that much feeling for the sick people and the needs of the people of the city, God is sure to bless the business and like that. Right. So it's greatly appreciated, I'm sure, by me and by the, all the people of this, uh, of all the Christian people. Let's all gather out, bring out the unsaved for Sunday afternoon. Maybe the Lord will give us a great altar call. And maybe a four or five hundred next week. Now I drive go home, I go home free tomorrow night with all my heart for God will give me something to say for Sunday afternoon that may bring in precious souls into his kingdom. And Sunday night, oh my, I just trust that we'll have a glorious healing service Sunday night. I trust it'll be May God bless all of you.
and ever keep you in His divine will, my friend. Now for scripture reading, and just a testimony, and then we shall start this. Tonight we're going to take just the regular more out of heaven prayer service as you. The Lord provides. One of the brothers was just a little <laughs> elated this morning. Have I got time to tell it? I don't know. It was a, we were having breakfast together, such a fellowship. I raised up the talk, and it's just about like it is here now, and just about that cold. We were talking concerning the meeting, going out to the street. Reverend Mr. Bowman had a hold of my arm. Been talking, how did you see those things? Just what nature is it when it takes place? Well, while I was walking with him, all of a sudden, something just came right down for me. And I realized I was a different part of the city. Uh, I knew I could hear Mr. Bowen talking, but I, I knew I wasn't with him. I was somewhere else. <laughs> and I looked, standing on the corner, and there was a lady holding two little twins, a little pair of twins. And they were, had their little hair braided in the back. She was holding them with her hand. Then I began to get to myself, and I was still walking right for the minister. Two or three of the ministers were walking along, one of the ministers' wives. And then we started a little few steps farther, just as I started to tell him about it, he came down on me again. I was that time walking right along the street, but I was riding in a car just as natural as if I was in my room and transformed right here. And I seen three girls with some kind of a, a costume on, like they were been to a wedding or something crossing the street this way. I didn't know just what it was they were crossing this way. And he said, then I came to myself and I told the brethren what was going to happen. And when we got in the car and started out, we were supposed to go south on a one-way street and this minister I suppose had been raised here, he turned right by the mercy, went right down on the opposite side of the street. And my, there was a big policeman mounted on a horse there. <laughs> Act like he was going to tear us apart. He was, oh my, he was just saying everything. And I wondered, and he held us up a few moments there. Just long enough for the three girls with the costumes to come walking by. I said, there's the reason, brother, don't you see them? <laughs> oh my, all of us praise the Lord then. The cops said, go on. <laughs> but I give it the ticket. See, it just so happens, brethren. The infallibility of it. It's perfect. There's nothing focused. It's real. Now, there's many times those things happen. Many times going to the city. Many times in the meeting. I send your seat one after the other. That's in the meeting. I just don't take time. I put more time to talking on something else. No doubt, but what they heal, the blessing flies to them. And I see in the meeting sometimes a different people that's going to be healed. The different desires and things of people. Now I'll tell you, now in the prayer line tonight, as certain as anything, God's going to make a great blessing tonight. Now, if, I, if I don't find them here, they'll be in the prayer line because I know it was tonight. And notice. You see it? Just, just walking along the street. Many times that happens. You don't know when it's going to happen or what it's going to do. You just simply transform. And you, of course, you just take it off somewhere else and show just what's going to happen. Then you just drop right back down again. And then you know just what? Sometimes I'll be sitting in the room. I'll be sitting in the room at home. Just sitting there waiting. And it just it's like something just changed. You're somewhere else. And you see just what's going to happen. You see the way it acts out. And then when it does, you be back in your room. And then when that comes to pass, you see it. That's nothing I do. I just act it out as drama. See? I just act out what he's already told me to do. That doesn't take faith. That's just acting out what he told me to do. See? Now the only part that faith is included in is in this prayer line when I have to exercise faith here. But when, when I'm praying for the sick, but if someone if he tell me to go to someone's house and how everything would be, I just go there and wait till everything just the way he says, and I just pay what he says, that's all. It's got to happen. It's already happened. It's in the foreknowledge of God. It's already been planned out. I just go down and act that out. See? 
So it, it is nothing that I could do, but just act on what he told me to do. Our ministers there going along the street, by, it happens all the time, but just, I guess God just had it in seat so that it let the ministers know it, know that I was talking about it up on the street there, and to let them see that happen, and even he turned, he, he wasn't him that turned that to corner, the Holy Spirit had to take him down there. It had to be that way. Do you believe in that? It had to be. Those girls wouldn't have been anywhere else. We went the other way. We'd have went around and see if the girls had been up this other end. Two, three, three blocks away. But we had to be there. He couldn't just went right ahead. That police had to stop him and hold him there. So those girls crossed in front of us according to what he showed me. See? And the police had just ball him out until that time. And the police said, go ahead. See? The police didn't even know it was the Holy Spirit working on him. See? It was. Holding him there. Well, brother, sister, God makes the enemy crazy. Why, Judas this has sold down the silver and said, I betrayed innocent blood. See? Is that right? The Roman said, truly, that's the Son of God. Pilate's wife. Look at Pilate. said, I wash my hands. I find no fault in him. Is that true? That's his enemy. Look at his pagan wife. That had nothing to do with this just man, for I've suffered many things in a dream today because of him. Is that right? A heathen. God makes his enemies to testify. The demons that were in those uh, people screamed out and said, Well, you're the Son of God, the Holy One of Israel. Is that right? Demons. Fortune tellers spoke out to his apostles. When others said they were imposters, these fortune tellers said, Well, they're a man of God that tell us the way of life. See? Make the demons testify of him. Everything has to testify. On the day that he died, God testified. The earth testified. The moon and stars refused to shine. The sun went down in the middle of the day. The elements all changed. It was so dark you could feel it. And thank the moon shut off. The stars shut off. The very God that created him was returning back. God himself, Jehovah, couldn't stand to see the side. The punishment had to be upon his own son. And all the elements, when, when he died, the Romans said, that's the son of God. There was a great earthquake. The shut the rocks that had been in the mountains since the days of the creation. The earth claimed he was the Son of God. The sun said he was the Son of God. The moon, the stars, the elements, everywhere. And he went to hell. And they knew he was the Son of God. And those that repented not the long suffering of the days of Noah had been waiting in those chains back there. They knew he was the Son of God. They were all, Noah testified of it. Enoch testified of it before Noah. And all, everything had to know he was the Son of God. And as part of him spoke up, the woman's seed had come to pass. Then he rose up, took the keys from the devil, the keys of death and hell. Rose up, broke the sunders of the grave, and split it open, cut out. Oh my, I said, all power in the heaven and earth is given to my hand. He that believeth in me, though you were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. He has set it up on high, setting at the right hand of God, making intercession, and we have just as much power as heaven's worth. Is that right? What if someone would come in here tonight and give you a, a money order for a million dollars? Oh, my poor, maybe indeed. Ah, you would rejoice and say, oh, my, how rejoice. And maybe there would be a man come in that was tattered and poor, dirty and ugly, and no matter what he looked like. It isn't the messenger, it's the message that he gives you. Is that right? But don't notice the messenger. It's the message that you're hearing. Now, and you look at that piece of paper, you start rejoicing. You say, buy more than a million dollars. There's a postal order. Or a million dollars. Or a bank draft. A million dollars. You say, I say to you, what are you rejoicing about? You haven't got nothing. You say, well, I've got a money order. Or, or a million dollars. Well, I say, well, that ain't nothing but just a piece of paper. Just paint, wrote on a piece of paper. You say, but looky here. That money order, before it could be written, there had to be a million dollars deposit before that order could be written. Is that right? When you say, well, when you read the Bible, what makes you all carry on so? When you said, he was wounded for our transgressions of the sight of When he said, whatsoever is you desire, when you pray and believe that you receive it, you shall have it. Well, we should start rejoicing. Why? You say, well, that's just the word, this word. But brother, before that word could be written in the Bible, there had to be a deposit made in Calvary up there to take care of everything that he said. 
Yes, sir. Each one of us has an account there and can draw off of it tonight. Just anything you have need of, and he's standing there with a pen in his hand that's the right hand of the Father, ready to write out your forgiveness, ready to write out your healing, or anything that you have need of, he's ready to write it tonight. Is that right? Your deposit was made at Calvary. Anything that you have need of, he's there to make it right before God. Oh, no wonder we're happy people. No wonder we can rejoice in the God of our salvation. For he's marvelous and wonderful. Now, in his reading, or in the writing, rather, we read this. And the book of St. Matthew, the ninth chapter, and the 18th and the 26th verse concludes. And while he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler, and worshipped him, worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. But come lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. Oh, See? Come lay your hand upon her. Now, he was a Jew talking to Jesus. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Not written in the scripture, not the promise that you have. But she said in her heart, If I touch his garment, I'll be whole. See? Now you have more than that. You have a divine promise. Is that right? You have a divine promise and a divine gift here in your midst now. Just look how much more you've got to believe by than what that poor woman had. She didn't even have a scripture for that. And the scripture says, These signs shall follow them as we that will lay their hands on the sick and shall recover. That's a promise. But she didn't have no promise, but she believed it anyhow. Why? But Jesus turned him about. And when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And her woman was made whole from that hour. And Jesus came into the ruler's house. And saw the minstrel and the people making an all. And he said unto them, Give place. For the maid is not dead, but sleep. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame thereof went abroad in all that land. God blessed his word. That it shall not return to be void, but it will accomplish that which it will purpose. Your faith, your faith, and God's word bring the result. The little ruler, let's think, let's think he was a fellow that he, he probably separated himself from the believer because the, the big church that day did not believe. They didn't believe any. Why he's nothing but a an imposter. But what if those fellows could come out of hell tonight and come back up, they'd want to believe on him. They know now he's the son of God. They know that it was their visitation. But it's too far. Now don't you let that be yours. You believe now. Believe now. Now remember when Jesus was on earth, he was considered a fanatic. Being against the church. And he was called a spiritual. Belzy is that right? One more two bells above us. The devil. Big fly, they scared the other flies off the sacrifice. Belzy, what they call it, in other words, he was a spiritualist. He was doing all these things by spiritualism. There's some wicked devil that separated himself from the believers, went out to the neighbor's house, and they heard him. That's that right. I just have faith and belief. Now, this little ruler, he had separated himself from the believers, went out to the they were the red fellows. But they're coming to eat. This girl got sick, but they probably called the doctor, the doctor don't always eat you. But the girl got sicker and sicker, and after a while, the bread left her. She was gone. The child got 12 years old for soon. And now, the girl was getting sick. All the hope was gone from the doctor. This was no hope. Now she had to get to Jesus. That's sometimes the way God has to get people for the police. Isn't that right? They had to get to Jesus. I hear somebody say, well, that fellow, that Nazarene, that fanatic over there, that's doing that healing, that divine healer, what you call him? Well, I'll get put out of the synagogue if I have anything to do with it. See, he 
was considered a quack. And rather, all the people that ever lived like God or been in God's program has been considered heretics, quacks, fanaticism, some, some other maybe. That's true. Probably some other, some other maybe. But just as sure as there is a fault, there's a truth. See? There has to be a good dollar before a bogus dollar to be made off of it. Isn't that right? If it wasn't for the bogus to be real. So now it's up to your discernment. If it's according to the scripture, working in scripture life, then you believe it. For no man can do a miracle in my name and can keep life me. Is that what Jesus said? That's right. And these signs shall follow them as believe. The nine spiritual gifts operate, moving in the body, which is promised by Jesus Christ. See? But the world has got all the got so formal and indifferent that they just have their own set ways, their own rituals, their own creeds and so forth. And if you don't but come right after that, you're not in it. See, that's the way the church is ordered, and you've got to come right up and look through my glasses or you don't see it all. See? You got now God doesn't limit himself to any church. No, he doesn't. Remember when the disciples got to thinking one time that they were the only ones. The only ones. Jesus, the very next day, sent out 70 others. Is that right? God never wants anyone to build anything around himself. All glory goes to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So we must try to think of ourselves or our church. We must spread out our arms and look for God. That's right. Now when you see anything, search it. Look to it. Well, did Jesus say, if you'd have known me, you would have known my days. Did Isaiah speak of me and so forth? Now all the prophets spoke of this day. Isn't that right? These things would be taking place in this day. And then the last day, scoffers would come. Is that right? Now look where you said the Spirit, where the Spirit speaks, speaks that in the last days people would be. They'd be heady. You know what heady? High-minded. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Sundays and everything else, they fill up the picture shows, the dance hall. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Truth breakers, incontinent, fears, and despisers of those that are good. Holy rollers, hillbillies, everything else. Despisers of those that are good. Not as we're good, but fine. There's none good but God, but God is in the people what makes them good. Mark the perfect man. It's God in you that makes it perfect. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Be therefore perfect. How can you be perfect? Not in yourself, but in Him. God don't look at you then. He looks at Him. Well, you say, I'm in Him. How do you get in? By one Spirit. We're all baptized into one body, and then you're in Him. When you're baptized with the Holy Spirit into the body. 1 Corinthians 12. Is that true? Then in Him. Now, Eddie, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, truth breakers, false accusers, discontent, fears, and despisers of those that are good. Having a form of godliness, not church going. The people go to church, turn to school, confession. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Is that what the Bible says? Now remember, there was emphasis put on that the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter days, these days, the express time of that, that prophecy be fulfilled is now, in the latter days. There we are. We're here. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away, for this is the sort that goes now, now, please sit again, laid away with divers lust, so in circles. I, I hope that don't hurt any of you. Brother, when it comes to a time at my tabernacle, which I may have to return someday, but if it gets to the time that we have to borrow chickens and sell it for 50 cents a plate to pay the preacher, I'll quit preaching. That's exactly right. And have these sewing circles where they sit and sew and sew and sew and talk about this sewing so well, that, That's about the way they end up. That's right. When I was a meter reader, I went into a base of where they was having some kind of a train like that, and the jokes that a drunken sailor would tell them women were telling up there. They didn't know I was a preacher. I'd read them to meet her. And I went up and knocked on the door, and they come to the door, and all of them in there smoking cigarettes and going on. I said, lady, I said, I may get fired to this, but all right. 
I said, do you mean to tell me that you all are here in a religious worship when I heard somebody repeat a prayer a while ago? That this is our circle store and something? I said, and the jokes that you're telling are, she said, you're supposed to be reading the meters. I said, I'm a gospel preacher and I'm on my father's business all the time. That's right. I said, I knelt down in the room and had prayer in the room, and that broke up that so-and-so circle right there that time. I asked God to save that bunch of sinners. That's that right. I don't know where it had any effect or not. I may have to wait till eternity, but I did my part. Right. Oh, my having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Drop that, turn away. Get away from it. Stay away from it. Get out to God and pray through to God and stay right with God. Live for God. I, I usually in my services, anybody's been in other churches, oh, I never speak to people like this. It's not. But I feel the time has come, friends, when something's got to be said. See? Uh, see? If God has performed these things, and then if God is, a, is, is true, we know He is, and can perform these things, the Holy Spirit telling me to say these things. I don't know why. Is to say these things. And friends, turn away from your ways of just halfway Christian. There's no halfway Christian. You're just fooling yourself. See? You're, you're either a Christian or a sinner. You never, as I said, you never did see a drunk, sober man. You're either drunk or sober. You ever see a black, white bird? Either black or white. See? And you're either right with God or wrong with God. That's right. And the only way you can be right with God is being born again. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he can't see the kingdom of God. No matter what he's done. How many good deeds he's done, he's got to be born again. And when he's born again, he can understand what it's all about. Now, God bless you. Ever teach you with my prayer. We're going to have a prayer line just in a moment. Time now. So we can run an hour and a half or more in the prayer line or as long as we possibly can. Thanks again, all of you. I guess you wonder why I stopped, didn't you? I, I know it's time to stop for the one who watches over it and moves to the platform. And I know when it's time to quit. All right, it's time to the prayer. Let us die our head. Our Heavenly Father, I don't know why you want to stop just at this time. I had other things to say in the little story to tell about this a case of healing, but thou has spoken, and I want to obey. Bless, uh, dear Father, now the services. May that your spirit move over this audience in a great, marvelous way. Father, may men and women sitting here tonight, may they just shut off themselves from all other thoughts but you. May they forget about the work that they've got to do tomorrow or things that they did today. May they live for this hour that's coming on now. That it, as though it might be the last hour that they live on the earth. May they be thinking only of Christ standing here at the platform or in his majesty. In his great holiness seen standing here. A man of sorrow, acquainted with grief, bowed down his head. The Lamb of God. He was smitten through. He was the lamb led to the slaughter. Oh, how that his trembling hands and his quivering flesh, when they nailed the nails, and when they pulled the thorns down over his brow, and the blood run down into his eyes. How I longed to stand where Mary stood and John at the foot of the cross and let the blood cover me. Oh, God, we're now coming close to the close of this lovely little meeting here we have. Your children sitting here. We know it's the devil's business to get around the people. Say, well, we'll just wait. We'll find out. Oh, God, that's what he did in the days when you were here in flesh. Called the people to be deceived and walked away and forgot God and reaped a great harvest as Father, may men and women not neglect tonight, but may they come and accept thee who we love and are cherishing and are giving all praise and glory. And may your gift, the great angel of God that stood to the right of thy humble servant, 
that spoke and sent these things and confirms it in the eyes of thousands. O eternal God, may he come tonight with great power and blessing and minister to each and every one here. May many be healed tonight because of his presence. God shall be given all glory and all praise will be given to this great, holy, infant Son of God. For we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now everyone be just reverent and possibly to be while we're having this time of prayer. I can't if you can believe for all things are possible. I, I, 
played it in our campaign team song all along. One night there at Fort Wayne, I was sitting up there way up in Brother Rediger's study. How many ever heard of Dee Rediger? Fort Wayne Gospel Never. You knew what a rapper Romaine is, didn't you? Romaine, I should be married this month. It's been about that week. One of her, her sister died the same way. And I come down one day at home, and they, so many hundreds of people gathered around on the outside, I couldn't hardly get in. When it's bringing me back out, my brother, somebody said, I want you to come back here in your coal shed. Miss Rediger's back there in your coal shed. I said, what, Rediger? Beating from Fort Wayne? I said, yes. He's been dead for years. Or not dead, gone to glory. He was a warrior of faith. I believe he was pressing on, and God had to move him off the scene. He got into this time here. He was going on with God. Then what happened? I said, B.B. Rediger's daughter said, yes, that she's been in this condition for about two years. And I went back there. You never know how I felt when I seen Miss Rediger. She always had a place in my heart as a real lady. And Mrs. Rediger, sitting in my coal shed in the church with her daughter, sitting there staring Narnia had done left me. But standing there thinking of Brother Rediger in a few moments to come on. She just stuck her head down across at the mouth. Beautiful young lady. And all at once the Holy Spirit came down. The angel of God come near. I said, Satan, I'm always make her. In the name of the Lord Jesus, she snapped her right mind. Went home normal. She's right now, was in touch care of all the business this summer at the tabernacle and everything. She gets married this month. I was sitting there in the Fort Wayne Tabernacle there, listening. I heard that song come in, Only Believe, right in the same seat where Paul Rader said all. Something just moved over my heart. Oh my, he's gone, but his songs live on. Lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives divine. Partings leave behind us, footprints on the sand. Let's pray now. Father, I'm thinking of thy servant Paul Rader. Thinking of how he believes you for divine healing. Thinking of Brother Rediger. Oh God, how he cheered the climb up there to his grave. That dear, precious people that his love lingers on in their hearts. Many of them want to be buried around him, knowing that someday the grave will come open and he'll come out. Across the world, there's many of those dear, precious saints of God that your children has rallied around. Wouldn't it be wonderful someday when we all come forth to go to meet each other and then be caught up in the air to meet the Lord? We're longing for that day, Father, which we know is near. Bless us now tonight as we, this generation, are doing our part to make a path that others might follow behind. Help us, Father, tonight. Now I realize I'm to stand here before demon powers and know that they're in this building tonight circling, haunting against me. But thou art here, Father, to protect me from all powers of evil. I pray that you will help me tonight. May every spirit, unclean spirit, lead the people. May they be made whole in Jesus Christ's name. something else. 
some other something, but it, it wasn't. It, it's a tumor, and the spirit, every time I'd start to say something, it'd feel it break up, tumor, tumor, tumor. And I just couldn't hardly, I'm ashamed of myself and apologize before God, but that's what it, what it is, it's a tumor. Hi, young man. Only God can heal you, you know that, don't you? You're just a laddie boy. You want to serve him, don't you, brother? Will you do it if you let you get well and you'll serve him all your life? Let us bow our hands. Father, I ask thee to be merciful to our brother. He's in need, O oh God, of being healed. Bless him now and may the Spirit of the Lord be upon him to make him well. May this evil power that's on him May it leave and go away. May it be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Just a moment, audience. It holds to him. And you may raise your head just a moment. If you can. I want you to see something here, young man. To increase your faith. You're nervous, sort of boss, Try to think your own thoughts. You know what I mean? You want now watch. I want you to take your hand off of mine. I want you to look here at my hand. Uh, just look like yours or any other man's. Uh, let's have your hand over here. Yeah, doesn't have any effect at all on my hand there. Okay. Now take your other hand there. Now watch what happens. Start swelling those things. See it run across that little thing? That's what we call, what I call, a vibration. Sometimes you pick it up in the air from demon power. Don't you think we're watching several of them here tonight, too? That's right. Now, it ain't going to do you no good to try your best, and you know who I'm talking about. Try to throw anything up this way because God will put it back on you. Remember that.
that the Spirit of God may have preeminence, might be able to cast out evil spirits, and to make these people well. O thou demonest bound the boy, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, come out from him. Now, young man, before I look at my hand myself, something's happened, hasn't it? All you may raise your head if they desire. All right, now, raise my Now, look, brother, something happened, didn't it? The tumor died. Now, watch. Now, see where your hand is now? That's just exactly the same way I had mine. Now, put this hand over here. Just like it was. Now, this hand, usually when you put that on there, it would swell up, turn real dark, and little white things would run across the bike. Is that right? I put it on there now. Stop that. Let's say praise the Lord. Just have faith and believe. All right, come on. Now, see, it takes faith. It, it, if thou can't believe, open your mouth. I use this. Can you believe? All right, let's have your Oh, I 
Jesus is going to be he now. You do that. Let us bow our heads. The lady's a Christian and a believer. Our Heavenly Father brought again Jesus, thy Son, from the dead and setting at the right hand of thy majesty tonight, making intercession for us poor, unworthy creatures of the earth. Calling to us to come unto me, all your labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Rest from our weariness, rest from our sickness, rest from our sin. Just give us rest. He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Now, sister here, oh, how she needs you tonight. Go at the table, can he? But you can make her well, Father, if she just let that faith loose. Satan, thou tormentor, come out of the woman in the name of the Lord Jesus. Look this way, sister. It leaves you now. Go eat what you want. Let's say praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. God bless you, sister. Sins are forgiven you. 
the body is healed. Now go and spend the more. All right. Sometimes you might wonder why those things are. What does this? A lady, I guess you could hear it from here. What she done when she was a little girl, and then when she once knew God and wandered away from God. How she, about two weeks ago, how she once then dropped, tried to pray and get back. She never even come back to the full realization of Christ until just now. And when she, it would not leave her until first that was revealed to her and told to her, then it left her and the tumor died and went away. Friends, the Almighty is here in this person. It's a death spirit on the woman. All right. Bow your head. The Son of God, who cannot fail, the heavens and earth may pass, but thy word cannot pass. You promised these things, and we're happy to be living in the day to see them come to pass. And now, as our sister standing here, Satan has put a death spirit on her. Maybe to cause her to be dead, walk out the floor, move his vehicle somewhere, be killed. Ailments of her body set in, Lord, with faith, believe. Oh, help, dear Father, that you may be healed this night. Thou demon, come out of the woman in the name of the Lord Jesus. Sure, 
Commerce that if you just come a little close so I can talk to you. I do not see you. Of course, you have a strange feeling. Right? It's nothing to hurt you. It's the presence of the Lord that makes you well to what you're talking I want you to look this way, Jim. You're extremely nervous right now. And if you don't, one thing I know you don't have a good circulation of blood. There's something concerning your blood that's wrong, and I can't tell you what it is. But your blood circulation is not right. But I can't tell it. It's not that something has happened. And I think there's something lacking in the blood. And instead of being something that's a disease, yes. It's a desire in your heart for something, isn't it? God bless you, woman. So, listen, you're desiring the child, aren't you? Isn't that right? Yes, ma'am. There's something wrong with the blood. I know. See, the, the blood is not fertile. But God make your blood fertile. Oh, Jesus, Son of God. Poor little trembling woman walk up here like that. As much uh, child birth control is going on in the world today, and a mother, a woman, walk up like this and desire children. God bless this woman who I bless, and may she receive the desire of her heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your humble servant begs for this woman. Amen. Bless me, my sister, friend. Let us say praise be to God. He gives us victory. It was entirely a little puzzling. There was something wrong in the bloodstream that's causing that condition. But God is here to move everything. God is the giver of life. I had an extremely lot of confusion the other day about someone. sitting there has done been healed of death and just brought her car over and give it to her sitting right there when I turned a while ago and spoke about it let's say praise the Lord God bless you sister that's very good just wonderful mother you hey you're in serious trouble aren't you mother Somebody just died trying also, but I believe it's you. Don't you have to be a tuber? A liquid? Do you believe with all your heart? Do you believe if I, if I ask God to bless you, you'd be healed? May God grant you your desire. The young lady that brought you there also. You're sick also. That's, you're her daughter. Isn't that right? I see. And don't you have a kid in trouble? Isn't that right? God bless you. May the Lord Jesus grant you your desire, both of you, both mother and daughter, and don't hold well. Oh, let's say thank the Lord. They put their arms behind each other. Our Heavenly Father, may this blessing that thy servant has asked for them, that mother and daughter, may they receive their blessing. May they go out, Lord, believing the angel's message that says nothing shall stand before the prayer. May they be healed, each one, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray. All right.
somewhere. This woman's before the gift. Now, I don't know what's wrong with her. See, she's got many things, but it just keeps pulling right across this way. The two between there, it's, a, it's somebody in here that sticks the same way she is. Uh, just a moment. I wish you could see what that is. Just, uh, oh, I want to say hallelujah. Look at the way, sister. Believe now with all your heart. You have heart trouble for me. Isn't that right? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, be merciful, Lord. This woman has number one enemy, heart trouble. No, she can't stay very long without your help. No physician can ever have anything to do with heart trouble. Only the one who lives in the heart, Christ Jesus. God bless her. May she be healed of this heart trouble. Satan, you who bound her, come out of her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go on your own rejoicing.
you believe, sister, if I tell you something? Would you take my word and accept it? Something's on you now, isn't it? Something's making you feel very strange. You're faint, sister. Your arthritis is gone from you. God bless you. This lady sitting here with this black hat on right through here has got heart trouble, too. I can't tell this what's happened. That, yeah, lady, you had your thing, your hand up. Isn't that right? Have you got heart trouble? Stand up, lady. Yes, that's... Oh, you're Sister Brown, aren't you? Well, I'm, uh, 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 I didn't know who you was, Sister Brown. God bless you. May Jesus Christ grant you your desire. Now, being she was Sister Brown, I knew you. Let's find someone else right there. Let's see, there's a little lady sitting right there next to you. Is trying to find favor, too. Would you stand up, young lady? Look this way. You believe with all your heart? You know the lady next to you? You don't know her. I don't think you did either. You sit down there and have to be sitting by. Is that right? The little lady, you're nervous, aren't you? In nervous trouble? Got eyes. It bothers you also. Eye trouble, isn't it? Say, you're Catholic by faith, too, aren't you? By faith, you're Catholic. All right. Accept Jesus Christ as your healer now, and he'll heal you. Will you do that? If you do, raise your hand. Raise your hand I accept. God bless you, sister, and grant you your desire of your heart. Amen. Let's say praise the Lord. <laughs> Lady sitting here, sitting here looking at me with the glasses on. Wet cancer, but Christ has healed you. That's if you stand up now, you're, you're made well. And you there with the brown coat on life while I've had it. Now you can stand up. You stand right there with your prayer card. Yeah, stand up. Jesus Christ is made. Yes, sir. He's made you the whole now. Let's say praise the Lord. He'll heal any of you if you believe it. you believe it? Let's stand there. Some more of it. I'm believing, friends, while this spirit is moving through the audience. Right now is the time for God to heal the whole audience of you at once. Let us do it. Let us believe you with all our heart. Yes, that was a hard trouble face standing right there. God bless you, sister. Yes, thank you. You're at ease. God bless you. That's that you well. Yes. In fact, amen. Yes, mother. You with your hands up. You were healed. Just stand there, heart trouble. That's, I don't... Let's, let's bow our heads. Staying here in the line, dear friends. Maybe it wasn't just exactly to the line. Believe. All of you would want to lay your hands on one another there, would you? Lay your hands on one another. Except God's provided way, wouldn't you, please? That's the way. Raise up and say, I thank you, Lord, I have for healing. Now, when I pray for you, believe with all your heart. You can heal all of you right now with one heart. Heavenly Father, I now ask you to heal every one of these people. May the Holy Spirit of God fall in this place.